Today I want to talk about Parkinson's disease. And in Parkinson's, if you remember from school, the substantia nigra, which is in the midbrain portion, it produces dopamine. And in Parkinson's, you know, you're having a failure to produce the dopamine resulting in tremors. And a lot of those tremors are a resulting thing because you're trying to increase sensory stimulation to the brain. So the body responds to that by adding tremors. Now what you're going to find is majority of Parkinson's patients, over 90% by far in our office, they have massive forward head carriage. So you can imagine if this brain stem is being pulled and this brain is shifted forward three, four inches, it's going to pull a lot of stress on the substantia nigra area portion of the midbrain and it's going to affect the release of dopamine. So the first thing we got to we'll focus on is bringing that head back and restructuring that curve inside the spine. Now before you, before I show you how to adjust a Parkinson's patient, I'm going to share with you the patient's x-rays who I'm going to be adjusting shortly. Now this is his first x-ray and what you'll first notice is massive forward head carriage. I mean the chin's virtually almost touching the chest here. You can see over 135 millimeters forward, not to mention a huge reverse curve, you know over 17 degrees of a reversal there. So we know that his brain stem, his midbrain, is having a mass amount of pressure going on there, affecting dopamine release. So this is what we're going to do. Now the same patient, 36 adjustments later, we took a post x-ray, and this is what it looks like here. What you'll first notice is that he went from 135 millimeters forward to 92. And not to mention, he now has a positive curve going in the right direction, no more curve reversal. So we totally took a mass amount of pressure off that brain stem, spinal cord, midbrain, substantia nigra, restoring proper dopamine release. He's obviously not there yet, but we're making huge progress. And he'll even highlight to you, and he'll even mention that he's now been able to walk for eight seconds on his own. He's never been able to do that. So from here, let's go look at some adjusting techniques. All right, let's lay on your back, buddy. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take pressure back on this head here. You're not going to show his x rays on the YouTube? Now, what I'm going to do first here is I'm going to do some cranial work on him. So I'm first looking at the sphenoid here. And you'll find it's <laughs> lateral on his left side. So I'm going to press an indentation here. Put constant pressure here for about five seconds until I feel it release. He likes that one. I know. <laughs> then I'm going to get his maxillary bone here and his nasal bone. Open up the frontal sinuses here and then go along the sagittal suture. And it kind of peaks here, so I'm putting pressure and opening it up. And this is just going to increase circulation of cerebral spinal fluid to the brain tissue. Awesome. So we can make new brain cells. Neuroplasticity. Now here, for his adjustment, I'm going to come up under here and I'm going to place my top hand over the forehead here. And what we're going to do is we're going to kind of do a zipper effect where I'm going to put massive pressure here to get that head back. Then I'm just going to hold here for very, just a couple seconds till I feel those muscles relax. Nice. And then here, get this other side here, it's the same thing. <laughs> Stop smiling, man. <laughs> Nice. Yeah, 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 down. Yep. And that's going to help put that curve back. And it's vital to have that hand on top of the forehead for this one. Because mm -hmm. his head's so far forward that we're going to literally be restructuring that this curve. This part goes up and this part is down. Oh, right? You got it. Exactly. And that's it. Perfect.